This conference will now be recorded. Right, let's start today's session. In the last session of object-oriented programming, we were discuss about types of variables and types of methods. That means a uh, class is a collection of variables and methods. We can work with three different types of variables with class and we can work with the three different types of methods. So we were discussed in the last session all three types of variables and three types of methods. And we are ready to start with the object oriented programming features like encapsulation, polymorphism, inheritance, abstraction, all these things. But before that, there are two more simple topics are there. That is inner classes, and then garbage collector mechanism. So once I discuss the two topics, then we'll start with encapsulation today. So what is inner class we'll discuss first. So sometimes we can declare a class inside another class is called inner class. Means in one class inside, we can declare another class. That is inner class mechanism, we can say that. So we can declare a class inside another class is called inner class. So in which case we can go for inner class, I'll explain that. So let us consider this one. Inner class. Class, when we declare, so sometimes we can declare a class inside another class is called inner class. Without existing one type of object, if there is no uh, existing of another type of object in that context we can go for inner class so let me write statement here <clears throat> without exist one type of object if there is no chance of if there is no chance of existing existing Another type of object, another type of object. In this situation, we should go for inner class. Without existing one type of object, if there is no chance of another type of object, in this case, we should go for inner class. In this case, we should go for inner class, we can say that. Suppose example class car is my class name. Okay, it's an object also because in Python everything is considered as what object only. So let's consider this is one object. So here inside this class car, I'm taking one more that is engine. Now you can say that is code. <laughs> So without existing one type of object like car, there is no chance of existing another type of object like engine. If you want to consult with this engine type, then we have to consult with what actually car type only. So class car and class engine here. So if you want to interact with this engine class, first of all, you should consult with what car. So this is outer class, first one, and this is inner class. In this car class inside, we are including one more class called engine class only. This is inner class mechanism, we can say that. So inner class means like this only. <coughs> a class inside one more class or one or more classes also no problem. That is inner class. Suppose here again, I'm taking university, university, and this is what college. So without university, there is no existence of college. So in the, inside the university, there is a college. So this is inner class mechanism. But the matter is here, if I have a class like outer class as well as inner class, how to access the stuff from inner class along with outer class object is the matter. Let's see this practically. So how we can able to include uh, methods and even constructors in both classes, how to access them if it is inner class. Let's see this. So let's write a new program. 
object oriented programming pattern i am creating one class called outer the name of the class is also outer i am taking but it doesn't mean that it's a built in class it's a user defined class i am just taking for easy recognition purpose i am taking class name is outer only class outer okay and def underscore underscore in it this is what constructor only so print i am using here outer class constructor like this outer class constructor now inside this class i am creating one more class sir if i try to create a class here inner class this is not inner class okay so we have to bring this indentation like this now this time it is called what inner class inside the outer class we are preparing one more class that is inner and in this now you can see underscore underscore in it this is one more constructor so this is inner class constructor i am using so inner class constructor inner class constructor and here inner class method also i am taking m1 is a method inner class method inner class method i can say that so look at this we have two classes outer class is one inside this outer class we have in it constructor so outer class constructor here and inside the outer class only we have inner class class inner so class inner class inside the inner class we are using constructor inner class constructor and df m1 method is there this m1 method inner class method like this so this m1 method belongs to inner class this total inner class belongs to outer class so two classes are available so class within the class but if you want to access okay here if you want to access inner class functionality then what we can do means <coughs> We have to create object for what? Outer class compulsory first. Let's create object for outer class. O equal to outer here. This is outer class object. Please meet your audio. Who is C? Yeah, O equals to outer. So outer is the class. O is an object of outer class. So at the moment when we create object to the outer class, who will execute? constructor will execute so what constructor outer class constructor is executing now sir so let's see this outer class constructor is executing or not so outer class constructor is executing yes fine but we need to target inner class now because inner class also having constructor and inner class also having what actually m1 method right yes so let's see this i'm trying to access i equals to i equals to so i have to create object for inner class but we cannot create object for inner class directly like this because i value i is an object of inner class i'm trying but if the class is available directly we can create object like this perfect but this class is available inside where outer class only inside the outer class only so to consult with this class by creating object first of all you need to consult with what uh, outer class only because that's what i said without existing one type of object if there is no chance of existing another type of object so without consulting outer class and no chance of uh, creating object for inner class that is for sure okay so o equals to outer i equals to inner so but inner class object we cannot create like this so you should you should take help of outer class object so how to do means here we have to use i equals to o dot inner this is correct look at this o is object of outer class i am creating this is object of inner class but inner class object is what actually i only with the help of outer class object only i created because inner class is under comes into outer class so o dot inner we have to use so we are creating object of what class inner class so i equals to o dot inner so the moment when we create object to the inner class who will execute inner class will execute inner class constructor will call now you can see 
outer class constructor inner class constructor clear outer class constructor inner class constructor fine but what about m1 method so m1 method is belongs to what inner class so we have to use i dot m1 directly we can call it this is one approach if we have <coughs> a method in inner class like this look at this because of this line only outer class constructor is calling okay when we create object to the outer class automatically outer class constructor is calling next because of uh, inner class object inner class constructor is calling because of i dot m1 m1 method is calling i dot m1 means i is a inner class object m1 is a method here inner class method is working fine sir no problem okay inner class method is working fine this is outer inner inner class method so this is one approach there is one more approach also there let me show you so what is that approach means just comment this all lines i want to go for one more approach so only one object i can create for both classes then we can able to access two classes methods how to access two classes methods we'll see now so i equals to outer dot inner look at this i'm creating object uh, at a time for outer class as well as inner class only one object is applicable for two classes outer as well as inner i dot what i am taking m1 only directly this is correct same result we will get sir you can see i is an object of outer class as well as inner class the moment when we create object for outer class and inner class their respective constructors are executing outer class constructor inner class constructor and that m1 method is also there that is inner class method i dot m1 method is there inner class method is working fine got it yes next to what i am trying to do one more approach is there sir here instead of this approach no object reference directly i am trying to use class through also yes we can use class through also we can call this all like this outer dot inner dot m1 let's run this we got the same result again outer dot inner dot m1 so this is the constructor only sir actually so because look at this though it is look like class name but originally it is a constructor name but as i said that in other languages like c sharp dot net java constructor name should be same as class name in that cases but even in python also constructor name is same as class name only but whenever we create using this outer class name so automatically the constructor is initialized it's going to replace with init only init means initialization this is constructor it's a special method actually but how it can be uh, replace this uh, init method because of this constructor only here we are using this constructor no? outer dot inner dot m1 so originally constructor name this is only this name can be replaced with what uh, init method init is there so override it is so outer dot inner dot m1 it's okay outer class constructor because of this one inner class constructor because of this one and m1 method is there inside the inner class method perfect so you can use any one of these depends on situation but all the time we will not recommend this one okay all the time we will not recommend this one even this one also first approach is the best one i will tell you why it is best one first approach is suppose right now in my program we have only two classes outer class and inner class but moreover outer class is having only constructor there don't be any method but inner class is having method as well as constructor but look at this in case outer class is having any uh, what we can say method f f1 is there f1 is a method and here i'm taking outer class method just example outer class method we can say that outer class method okay this is outer class method outer class method f1 is the method which is belong to outer class m1 is a method which is belongs to outer class inner class sorry okay 
but sir in this situation if i want to access f1 and m1 is this possible so like this outer dot f1 is possible correct but again inner dot f1 no it's not possible so again we have to go for outer dot inner dot okay m1 method what is the problem here so outer dot f1 means yes f1 method is belongs to outer class only outer class again inner class m1 method is belongs to inner class inner class belongs to what outer class so there there, there is a situation two times where we are using outer class constructor here look at this two times outer class constructor will be initialized look at this outer class constructor because of this outer class constructor is executing because of this f1 outer class method is executing again outer class constructor inner class constructor inner class method got my point so look at this all are different so two times the same constructor is executing so that's what here this is not recommendable so if i do like this only what inner class method inner class constructor outer class constructor is there but outer class method is missing so to avoid this situation what we can see best option is whenever we have inner class outer class it's having their own methods like we can see outer class is having in constructor and method f1 outer inner class is having constructor and method m1 like this okay so then we can go for this one sir better option so o equals to outer so simply o dot what f1 i can say that i equals to o dot inner i dot m1 because of this outer class constructor will execute because of this outer class function will execute and because of this inner class constructor inner class method perfect there is no uh, what we can say problem at all let's run this outer class constructor outer class method inner class constructor inner class method like this okay this is the case okay so this is inner class and outer class mechanism in case if we have multiple classes inside the another class how do we access this is the approach so only we are working with so far only direct classes just i create a class inside the class i just create a method and i access them but in case if we have class within the class then how do we access means this is the approach action to access class within the class this is the approach here okay so next what i am trying to do gc is there garbage collector mechanism in python gc is there so far we have not discussed anything about garbage collector because it's a built-in nature by default in python garbage collector is working fine but how it will work and what is the scenario you must and should aware of that generally garbage collector is used to provide automatic memory management sir automatic memory management what is automatic memory management so generally in any programming language if we take when we write a program okay when the program is execution starts so it it needs some memory because we we we, we, we are trying to create many objects to the class and we are going to uh, store the data within the variables so in that context memory is obviously required but who is going to allot, allot the memory to our objects and to our variables in our uh, class programming garbage collector because as a programmer uh, we are not going to provide any memory management code we are not going to write any memory management code it is automatically uh, what we can say uh, creating so we are not going to write any memory management code okay we are not uh, uh, writing any explicit code for maintaining the memory allocating the memory deallocating the memory no so automatically it will take care who will take care garbage collector will take care so garbage collector is used to provide automatic memory management what is automatic memory management means uh, whenever objects are required then garbage collector will allot the memory for that objects whenever the objects are not required any memory that means ideal objects are there means garbage collector will deallocate memory here 
and after deallocation memory then it will be destroyed from the memory location so ultimately what i am saying garbage collector will do cleanup activities cleanup activities means when memory is really not required then it should be destroyed from the memory when memory is required it should be alert alert the memory so allocation and deallocation process is done by garbage collector actually so that is automatic memory management process but by default in python programming in every program garbage collector is activated but how do we check sir garbage collector is activated or not we will see that with practically but before that imagine that there is no garbage collector is involved in our python programming so as a programmer every time whenever we write logic code along with logic code we should write memory management code also that is for sure okay memory management code also we have to write explicitly so along with logic code you should write memory management code also that is explicitly is required so this is automatic memory management is there no garbage collector that will take care internally so if there is no garbage collector we need to concentrate on uh, our logic code along with logic code we need to concentrate how to alert memory to the logic code only so that is big uh, headache for the programmers so nowadays in every programming language even including java c sharp dot net and any other languages garbage collector integrated with that so it will take care memory management all these things okay so there is a one uh, uh, assistant which will be managed internally complete memory of python allocation and deallocation that assistant name is nothing but what garbage collector but i am saying that in uh, in python programming every program internally is having garbage collector it's working well because of that working well only as a programmer we are not going to face any memory issues at all okay as of now but how memory can be managed and whether garbage collector is activated or not how to check means there is a some functions are there look at this is enabled function is there is enabled function is there this function will return true or false this function return what actually true or false it returns sir is enabled function will return true or false is enabled function will return what uh, true or false only here so is enabled function will return true or false if garbage collector is active in your program it return true otherwise it return simply false this function is used to check whether your program is having garbage collector is in active mode or not next if you want to disable garbage collector explicitly then we use what function disable function this is what actually to disable dc garbage collector explicitly to disable garbage collector explicitly next third one enable enable method to enable garbage collector explicitly to enable garbage collector explicitly if you want to enable again then we can use enable method all these three methods are present in a particular namespace that is import gc gc module or gc library is required if you want to work with these methods is enabled disable enable method so these three methods are present in what module gc module so import gc it's a small letter gc gc means garbage collector and you can check with is enabled disable enable method how it will work we'll see let's add a new program here torrented programming 14 let me try to import gc this is a built in library no need to explicitly install and i'm checking that dc dot is enabled method is enabled method will do what whether it is garbage collector is active or not it will check but as i said that by default in every python program garbage collector is in active mode only so that's what it written what's a true only import gc then print gc dot is enabled method that is true if you want to disable garbage collector explicitly then what we can do here gc dot what actually disable method so now garbage collector is disabled sir do you want check again whether it is disabled successfully or not let me check print gc dot is enabled method again it written false because initially it was 
true now it is false because we disable garbage collector explicitly again do you want to enable garbage collector explicitly we use enable method and let's check again whether it is disabled or not so again is enabled method through we can find now because of this line gc dot is enabled method true disable method after disable again i am checking false enable method after enable i am taking is enabled that is true only so true false true like this okay import gc gc dot is enabled gc dot disable gc dot is enabled gc dot enable gc dot is enabled like this true false true but no need to check just for your clarity i am giving because every program is uh, having by default garbage collector it will work internally so how it will work i am showing but one more important uh, thing is uh, so far we know in the context of object oriented programming constructor you know that constructor name is what underscore underscore init underscore underscore init means initialization part that is okay but what about destructor so i am introducing destructor now destructor means a uh, garbage collector will use internally destructor only sir what is destructor how it will use what is the purpose of use so i am talking about destructor you know about constructor but now destructor i am taking destructor what is destructor here in python destructor destructor in python destructor is a special method special method of the class how constructor is a special method of the class same in python destructor is a special method of the class only sir it is a special method of the class and destructor name is destructor name is underscore underscore del underscore underscore of self this is the name of the destructor constructor name you know already underscore underscore init underscore underscore that is constructor name but destructor name is what underscore underscore del underscore underscore of self only self is the first parameter of the destructor common it is so what is the role of destructor actually here okay destructor 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 is used to perform clean up activities clean up activities clean up activities means what memory allocation and deallocation like memory memory deallocation we can say that clean up activities means memory deallocation so memory deallocation means it will destroy the memory so memory cleanup activities will do who will do destructor but look at this garbage collector will call a destructor destructor for cleanup activities cleanup activities garbage collector will call a destructor for cleanup activities after completion of destructor execution destructor execution then the garbage collector will destroy those objects okay strictly remember garbage collector will never destroy the objects sorry sorry destructor will never destroy the objects okay destructor responsibility is only what clean up activities means memory deallocation activities will be performed by destructor when destructor will call garbage collector will call destructor automatically whenever the objects are don't have any references that objects as are idled objects that idled objects memory clean up activities purpose garbage collector will call destructor destructor will start the execution and it will perform the cleanup activities that means memory deallocation activities after destructor execution then garbage collector will destroy those objects who will destroy ultimately objects from the memory means garbage collector will destroy the objects okay garbage collector 
will destroy the objects sir who will destroy the objects garbage collector will destroy the objects and who will perform cleanup activities destructor will perform cleanup activities so destructor responsibility is not for destroy the objects destructor responsibility is only for cleanup activities after completion of destructor then garbage collector only will take responsibility to destroy the objects from the memory so if no one is there to clean up or no one is there to destroy the objects from the memory then if the garbage collector is not there you will face memory problems whenever we execute your programs of python so destructor will call internally but let me show you whether destructor is executing or not every time so for your clarity i am including a simple program with a destructor how it will work so what is the working style of destructor okay but we are not required to include any destructor every time because not required because just for your clarity i am showing destructor example let's see this i am creating class let's see this class test here and here i am taking constructor as usual constructor execution begin print constructor here constructor execution execution is okay now i am creating object for the class like test class in the moment when we create object to the class you know that who will execute constructor will execute obviously so let's see this object oriented programming 14 and when we execute this then we create object for the class and when we create object for the class constructor execution is okay so constructor execution okay t equal to test in it is a method initialization print constructor execution is okay fine but behind the scenes destructor also executing i'm saying but we don't know exactly whether it is destructor executing or not so that's what i'm saying what df underscore underscore del the destructor print here what we can say destructor execution destructor destructor execution like this look at this constructor destructor is always followed constructor only constructor after the destructor immediately so let's see this destructor also how it will execute so let me wait for some time to waiting the output purpose just i'm taking import time time is a module name and i'm trying to uh, what we can say t equal to test now you can see time dot leap of five seconds i'm waiting let's see this five seconds constructor execution after five seconds destructor execution is going to be called okay like this destructor execution is calling or not yes suppose if i try to do this here print a end of the program end of the program i'm using now tell me here we have in this program we have a class test class we have a constructor like init initialization and we have a destructor like del destruction and we create the object for the class the moment when we create object to the class immediately constructor execution is going to happen and it will wait for time sleep file but the thing is first end of the program will print or destructor execution will print okay so first end of the program will print sir first what it will print end of the program so end of the program after that only destructor will execute look at this first it will constructor execution waiting five seconds time period is there and after that end of the program first only will execute after completion of program execution only destructor will call for performing cleanup activities after performing cleanup activities then then garbage collector will check whatever the ideal objects are there so that means which is don't have any references then that objects those objects will be deleted by this uh, garbage collector so this is exactly destructor working style but we are not going to include uh, we are not going to uh, use any destructor mechanism sir because the reason is what automatically garbage collector will use internally entire the destructor mechanism okay so this is garbage collector working style but internally it will work so we are not going to include any garbage collector any destructor 
but just an example how destructor is look like how it is going to be play the role at the time of execution i have introduced this destructor destructor is a special method destructor name is always underscore underscore death underscore underscore destructor is used to perform cleanup activities that is memory deallocation process garbage collector will call a destructor for cleanup activities once destructor execution is complete then garbage collector will destroy those objects only okay so this is complete uh, uh, introduction and basic pro basic programming of object oriented programming now it's time to start with object oriented programming features one one by one features you have to discuss like encapsulation polymorphism inheritance abstraction all four important features are there but first uh, we will start with encapsulation but encapsulation before we have to give uh, uh, some clarity so generally what i said encapsulation means in my previous lecture encapsulation is the process of uh, providing restriction to access variables and methods encapsulation is the process of providing restriction to access variables and methods why we need encapsulation means to prevent the data from modification why we need encapsulation means uh, to prevent the data from modification if someone is trying to modify the data we can prevent them <coughs> how we can restrict the variables and methods from someone means we can make the variables and methods are private sir so before going to show the examples of encapsulation you need to get the clarity of private variables and private methods how it look like okay so normally in other languages like c sharp dot net or java so programmers will use the access modifiers like private access modifier like public access modifier okay protected access modifier like this but in python there is no such kind of keywords like private public protected there is no such kind of keywords so only we have in python so symbolically we can recognize the variables are private or public or protected so that way we can recognize how we can recognize means let me show you so if the variable for example x is there x equals to 1 2 3 this is what actually public variable by default in python programming especially in object oriented by default all the variables and methods are private only yes sorry public only by default all the variables and methods in python programming is what sir public so the variable or method if they don't starts with any underscores that is called public variable or public method so x equals to 1 2 3 is a public variable suppose underscore y equals to 1 2 3 or else let me take values different like 10 underscore y equals to 20 this is what variable you know protected what variable it is protected variable underscore y equals to 20 means protected only okay protected next underscore underscore z equals to 30 means what actually private private underscore underscore z equal to 30 is private so the variable which is no underscore that is public the variable which is starts with single underscore that is protected the variable which starts with two underscores that is private so like this we have to restrict variables and methods this concept is applicable for methods also if method is no uh, underscores that is public method if method is having single underscore that is protected method and if method is double underscore that is private method strongly private but actually there is no protected just name convention we have to take so i'll i'll give you clarity now so protected means what public means anywhere we can access or no restriction public means no restriction no restriction comma anywhere we can access anywhere we can access this public variable anywhere we can access protected means we can access within the within the same class where we declare it where we declare it 
there we declared and also in the child class and also in the child class okay yes private means strongly restricted we can access only within the same class where we declare it we can access only within the same class where we declare it actually where we declare it public means no restrictions sir anywhere we can access protected means what we can access within the same class where we declare it and also in the child class also possible suppose in inheritance parent child relation is there once we declare protected variable that we can access in the parent class as well as child class but here private means what we can access only within the same class even though parent and child relation is there but we can't access that variables into child class only uh, parent class only we can access let's see this clarity here <clears throat> So, these are all important for discussion of encapsulation mechanism. Object oriented programming 15. I am creating class that is, for example, parent class or else normal class <coughs> we can create test class. X equals to 10. This is what variable? Public variable. Underscore y equals to 20. This is what variable? protected variable underscore underscore z equals to 30 this is what variable private variable okay yeah sys module is there system defined module that is why it is required it will come on the flow now this time it's not required to discuss about sys module okay in the end caps in exception handling mechanism we will use system defined module System defined module is used to stop the execution. There are some functions are there. Whenever situation demands, I will include this module. There is no relevant to this, ex ex this discussion and system defined module discussion. That will come in the flow. So class test is there. X equals to 10. That is public. Underscore Y equals to 20. That is protected. Underscore underscore Z equals to 30. That is private. Okay. Yes. So now I am trying to access, I am using constructor now, underscore, underscore in. So this constructor is a part of what's the same class only, test class, no? So I am going to access this. How to access self dot x? Is it possible or not? Yes. Because public variable we can access within the same class, possible. X to self dot underscore y. It is also possible. As protected variables, we can access within the same class, no problem. Again, print self dot underscore underscore z. It is also possible because private variable, though it is private, we are trying to access within the same class only. It's possible. Private variable is possible to access within the same class. Why not? Now you can see t equal to test now. So when we create object to the class, who will execute? Constructor will execute. So t equal to test. In it is the constructor here. Self dot x, self dot underscore y, self dot underscore underscore z. So now we can see here when we go for object oriented programming 15, constructor through, <coughs> we are getting all the output 10, 20, 30. Fine. So public variable we can access within the same class, protected variable we can access within the same class private variable also we can access within the same class there don't be any problem but the moment you can see this it is inside the class no let me write clearly inside the class and this is i'm trying to access now outside the class look at this here this is outside the class outside the class i'm trying to access outside the class means object reference only t dot x is possible sir because x is what variable public variable public variable we can access outside the class no yes why not look at this inside the class is okay outside the class x value we can access next year also i'm taking e dot underscore x underscore y protected variable also we can access outside the class because semi restriction 
but the moment when we try to access look at this t dot underscore underscore z underscore underscore z is what actually private variable the variable which is starts with two underscore that is strongly private so private variables can only be accessed within the same class where we declare it no outside the class this is restriction so even encapsulation also we can achieve with the private variables only not public and protected so look at this attribute error test object has no attribute underscore underscore z so because of private variables it's not possible to access outside the class so this is the rule just i am giving clarity so how it look like but in next session, we'll de discuss clearly encapsulation mechanism with dealing with private variables and private method. So this is public, this uh, is protected, this is private. One question. Uh, yeah, tell me. So a protected variable can be accessed from the outside as well? Yeah, we can access easily. But actually protected means we can able to use uh, in the parent class and child class. Let me show you that example. Yeah. Just a moment. Here it is. Uh, object oriented programming 16 i'm collecting just a parent class inside the parent class i'm giving uh, x equals to 10 this is public underscore y equals to 20 this is generally protected actually there is no protected only private public are there in python but just name convention we say protected because this variable we can able to access within the child and parent underscore underscore z equals to 30 that is private now we are in the parent class now let's create child class also just meaningful name child it is inherited from parent i can access with class name through also parent dot x is possible print parent dot what we can say underscore y it's possible so look at this this is public variable public variable there is no restriction we can access in the same class and child class protected variable also we can access in the same class and child class but look at this private variable even child class also not possible i will tell you 10 20 is there but the moment when i try to access this parent dot underscore underscore z that is no possibility you will get error again look at this type object parent has no attribute underscore child underscore underscore z so this is what private variable private variable we declare in parent class we can access only in the parent class even the child is inherited from parent it's not possible so public we can access protected we can access not private so it is not strongly private it is semi restriction in the child class parent class relation through we can access this protected but even if you don't want to allow the child classes also for not accessing parent class stuff, then we can go for strongly private that is underscore underscore chat. So based on this only, we are going to discuss about encapsulation. Encapsulation is possible with making the variables and methods are private only. So private variables, private methods through only we can achieve the encapsulation mechanism. So how exactly encapsulation is going to happen in the next session, we'll discuss in detail with private variables and private methods clearly. And this link will expire today only. So Monday session onwards, I will give you a new link. You can check on Monday before going to join the session. You can check your mails. You will receive the new link so that you can use that link only. This link will not work. So we will go for encapsulation inheritance abstraction polymorphism all we will start from monday onwards again you can use the new link i will send that